Hello Grade 12s. In this lesson, we'll join Diasha as she revises the sine, cosine, and area rules with her students Michelle and Debucho. Let's join them now as they start their first problem. Our first problem is to find the area in hectares of a piece of land from measurements provided by a surveyor. Here's the sketch that's been provided. The first fence extends from A to B, three kilometers along a road which runs due east. At the point B, a second section runs in a direction of 40 degrees east of south for one and a half kilometers to C. The third fence runs from C to D at an angle of 60 degrees west of south for four kilometers. And the last fence joins D to A. Okay, got it. Uh... Wow, I wouldn't know where to start. Well, I guess if we're going to use some trigonometry, we can start by cutting the piece of land into two triangles. So, perhaps we should join AC. That's a good start. Any reason, though, why you suggested joining AC and not BD? Not really. Would BD have been better? No, both would have worked out fine in this case. So let's join AC for now and we can work out what it would have looked like with BD later. So fill in AC and tell me which triangle you're going to start with. Remember, it's the area of the piece of land we're looking for. Mm, I'm not even sure where to start. I think we might need to use one of the three rules, but I think we'll need a reminder of what they are. Sure. The three rules are the sine rule, the cosine rule, and the area rule. The sine rule shows that side A of a triangle divided by sine A is in proportion to the other sides and the sine of the corresponding angles. The cosine rule uses the squares on the three sides of the triangle and one of the angles. Lastly, the area rule helps you to find area using two sides of the triangle and the angle between those sides. Well, we need area and we have two sides in triangle ABC and only one in triangle ADC. So I guess it must be triangle ABC. Agreed, but do you know the size of the included angle you said we needed? Well, we have this bit. And isn't the other part 90 degrees? Well, are you saying that because it looks like a right angle or do you have a more convincing reason? Well, to be honest, it looks like a right angle. But didn't you say that road AB is due east? Yes, I did. So how does that help? Well, this line runs north-south, doesn't it? Well done, Michelle. That's the key. The road which runs due east is perpendicular to the north-south direction which the surveyor drew in. That makes finding the area of triangle ABC very easy. It will be half times AB times BC times sine of 130 degrees. That's 0, 0,5 times 3 times 1,5 times the sine of 130 degrees. No problem there, but before we go to the calculator, let's see how we can find two sides and the included angle in the other part of the piece of land, in triangle ADC. That gives us a bit of a problem. We only have the four kilometer side, and I can't see how we can work out the angle. Good point. We're going to have to use triangle ABC to calculate the length of the side, which is common to both triangles, side AC. Then we can tackle the problem of working out the size of the included angle. Well, finding the length of AC shouldn't be a problem, but I'm with Michelle. I don't see how we can find the size of angle ACD. Well, let's find AC first then, and we can work out the angle afterwards. What rule do you think we need to use here? Well, the sine rule is simpler. So let's see if that will work. To find AC, we need to put AC divided by the sine of the opposite angle, which is 130 degrees, and then put this equal to one of the known sides of the triangle over the sine of the angle opposite that side. The trouble is we don't know either of the other two angles. That's right. So I'm afraid the sine rule's not going to work. 
we're forced to use the cosine rule here. It is worth remembering that when we know only two sides and the included angle, the area can be calculated without any problem. But to find other dimensions, we have to use the cosine rule first to find the third side. Once we have the third side, then the sine rule is useful for finding other measurements. Thanks, I see that now. So, using the cosine rule, I get AC squared is equal to 3 squared plus 1,5 squared minus 2 times 3 times 1,5 times the cosine of 130 degrees. So, AC will be the square root of all of this. To save time, I've uh, worked it out for you on the calculator. It's close enough to 4 kilometers, so I suggest you fill in 4 kilometers on the sketch. But I will keep the more accurate number in the calculator for further calculations. Now, what about the angle between sides AC and DC? Well, now that we know the length of AC, we can find the other dimensions of triangle ABC by the sine rule. And I think we're going to need this angle, angle ACB. But in order to do that, you are going to need to work out the size of the other angles at C. Hmm, how are we going to do that? Well, we do have this angle of 60 degrees. And I suspect the parallel north-south lines are important in some way. I've got it. This angle at C is alternate on the parallel lines made by the north-south lines and therefore equal to the angle of 40 degrees at B. Well done. That is the missing measurement we need because with angles of 40 and 60 degrees on the straight line through C, the remaining angle, the angle between these two fences of the piece of land, is 80 degrees. They are adjacent angles on a straight line. So, if we use the sine rule in triangle ABC to find the top part of this angle, we can subtract it from 80 degrees to find the included angle in the other triangle. Then I can use the area rule again. Don't forget that the most accurate value possible for side AC is still in the memory of my calculator. It's better to use that than to approximate at this stage. Perhaps the viewers can also apply the sine rule in triangle ABC to find angle ACB. Now let's have a look at your working. Well, we're pretty confident with what we've done, but it's always possible that I pressed the wrong button on the calculator or left out a bracket or something. I agree. It's easy to make a mistake and press the wrong button on your calculator, but in this case you're fine because I got the same answer as you. So now we can carry on and find the area of triangle ADC. No problem. Let me just store that angle in another memory location so that we can use it again in the area rule. The most accurate length of AC is still in memory, so I'm going to use variable A for the angle. Okay, now for the area rule. The area of triangle ADC is 0, 0,5 times 4 times 4,12, etc., times the sine of 33,835, etc. Well done. Now we're ready to calculate the area of the two triangles to find the area of the piece of land. What will the unit of area be? Well, all the measurements will be in kilometers. So the area will be in square kilometers. Correct. But the question requires that we give an answer in hectares. How do we convert from kilometers to hectares? Oh, you've got me there. I can't remember how many hectares are in a square kilometer. Well, it's not something you need to commit to memory. You can always look it up. But we don't always use all the metric measurements. The European countries originally worked with kilometers, hectometers, decameters, meters, decimeters, centimeters and millimeters. And there are 10 hectometers in a kilometer. A hectare is a square hectometer. So we could convert all of our lengths into hectometers by multiplying them by 10. But I've already entered everything into my calculator. And couldn't we just convert the final answers from square kilometers to hectares? 
Of course you can. You just need to remember that although we multiply by 10 to convert kilometers to hectometers, we need to multiply by 10 times 10 to convert square kilometers to square hectometers or hectares. Well, that's easy enough. So the area of the piece of land is the area of triangle ABC plus the area of triangle ADC. I'll write that in one statement. And after I'm done with the calculator work, I'll multiply the answer by 100 to change the square kilometers to hectares. Great stuff. We're nearly there. Let me also do the calculation so we can check each other. 0, 0,5 times 3 times 1,5 times sine 130 plus 0, 0,5 times 4 times recall memory times sine memory location A equals... That can't be correct. The area must be bigger than that. Bigger than what? We get 6,3... One nine eight six 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 five six squared kilometers. That sounds a lot better than my result. Let me see what I did incorrectly. Ah, there it is. I left out the closing bracket after the hundred and thirty degrees. Let me insert it now. But how did you know your answer was too small? Because even if the piece of land were a rectangle three kilometers by one and a half kilometers, the area would be greater than three. It couldn't be less than two square kilometers. Hmm, I see what you mean. I guess having an idea of what the reasonable answer would be is a good idea. It is. Or at least do the calculator work twice. That way you can be sure of yourself. Now let's get back to finishing off answering our question. And if we now multiply by 100, we get an answer of 632 hectares, correct to the nearest hectare. Thank you for joining us. Practice what you have learned by doing the questions in the Advanced Trigonometry Task video. You'll also be able to learn more about trigonometry on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.